Hello guys, welcome back to CW Creations. I'm Arjun here and today we are going to see how to create this animation. So first of all we don't need this default items. So select them all, press X to delete it. Now press Shift plus A and add a torus. And also add a circle from curve by pressing Shift plus A. Now I'm going to wireframe mode and select both the torus and circle. And press S to scale and scale it to 4.5. Now select the torus and add a decimate modifier to it. Reduce the ratio as you like. Now let's hide the torus for a little time until we add and position our camera. Now press shift plus A and add a camera. Go to the constraints menu and add a follow path constraint and set the target to the bezier circle. Also turn on follow curve. Now our camera sticks to the circle. Now I'm setting the forward to negative x, but you can also use positive x if you wish. Now go to the transformation panel and change the rotation of the camera till it gets following the curve. I'm giving rotation y to 0 degrees, rotation x to 90 degrees, and Z2 around 80 degrees. Now let's bring back our torus. Hit number pad 0 to go to the camera view. I'm not satisfied with the camera's rotation. So I'm slightly changing it. OK done. Now select the torus. And add a wave modifier turn on normals and hit space and check it out. Now let's add a new texture. So click this icon next to new option and it will take us to the texture panel and here click new. Select the type to clouds. Now let's go back to the modifiers tab and set the speed to about 0.1. And height to negative 0.2 meters. And width to 2 meters. And finally the narrowness to 1 meter. Now hit space and check out the animation. Looks like a living organ, huh? And now press shift plus A and add a UV sphere. Right click and click shade smooth. Now let's add particle system to the torus. Go to the particles tab. Click the plus icon. And select hair. Enlarge the source tab and change the emit from faces to emit from vertices. And also uncheck random order. Now go to the render tab. And change the render as path to render as object. And select the sphere in instance object. I think these sphere particles are a little too big. So I'm scaling the UV sphere to a value of around 0.3. Now let's add a material to the sphere. Go to the materials panel. Click new. And change the surface to an emission shader. And I'm giving a strength value of 5. Go to the scene panel. And turn on bloom for better visuals. Also I'm turning on ambient occlusion. Now go back to the materials panel. And I'm giving it a yellowish orange color. There is not enough light inside the torus. So let's add a light. Press shift plus A and add a point light. Go to the constraints panel. 
and add a follow path constraint to the light. Let's go to wireframe view to see clearly. Select the target to Bezier circle. So now it sticks to the circle. And also change the forward to negative x, as I previously mentioned, you can also use positive x in this. Change the offset value till the light is in front of the camera. I'm giving it a power of 35 watts. And changing the color to a yellowish orange color. And also play with the radius. Go to the scene settings. And turn on screen space reflections. And turn on refraction in it. And also turn off half res trace. Turn on volumetric shadows in volumetrics. Now let's give our torus a material. Go to the shading tab. Click new by selecting the torus. I'm going to rendered view. Now press shift plus A and add a Voronoi texture. Plug the color to the base color of the principal BSDF node. Again shift plus A and add a noise texture. And plug the factor to the vector of the Voronoi texture. Now I'm increasing the metallic value. And decreasing the roughness a little bit. Change the Voronoi texture from 3D to 4D, so that you can get a texture like this. Now select the noise texture. And press Ctrl plus T to add the mapping node and texture coordinate node. Now let's add a bump node. And plug it to the normal of the principal BSDF node. And also plug the position of the Voronoi texture to the height of the bump map. So our material is done. Now go to the layout panel. Select the camera. And go to the camera settings. And change its focal length to around 30 mm. Enable depth of field. And give a f-stop value of 0.6. And play with the distance until you get satisfied. For me it's 5.2 meters. Now go to the world settings. And change the color to pure black. I'm going to set this as a 240 frames animation, so that the maths will be easy. So in frame 0 and the camera selected, go to the constraints panel. And insert a keyframe in the offset. Now go to frame 240. And change the value to negative 100, as I selected negative x to move forward. And insert a keyframe. Now by using the same method let's animate our light. Select the light. Go to frame 0. And offset right click and click insert keyframe. And again go to frame 240. I forgot to check follow curve. And now in offset value I'm adding this current value to negative 100. Now right click and insert keyframe. Pretty cool huh? Add motion blur if you want. And I'm going to reduce the shutter to 0.25. And go to color management. And change the look to medium high contrast. Now we can add more animation to our camera. Select the camera. And go to the transformation panel. So at frame 0 I'm giving rotation Y a keyframe. And now I'm going to frame 240. And change the rotation Y to 360 degrees and add a keyframe. Now let's play our animation. Our animation is done. 
Now let's see how to export it. Go to the Output and Export panel. And in there change the file format to FMPEG video. And in encoding set the container to MPEG4. And in output quality, select perceptually lossless. And also select the output location. And change the shadow samples and render samples to a higher value. Higher the value, the better it looks. So that's all. Click render and render animation. So that's all for today guys. Please leave a like or comment and don't forget to subscribe CW Creations. This is Arjun signing off.